Hey everyone, it's John. Thanks for tuning in to Dry Fire Monday. Today, I wanna to talk about grip, particularly grip in dry fire and how you can kind of determine the way that your grip is gonna work best for you to keep that muzzle online, get good shots on target so that when we go to the range, we're the most accurate and fast that we can be so that if we're ever in a defensive shooting, we can be as fast and accurate as we can as well. So, grip, let's talk about it. There are live fire training tools and dry fire training tools. Mantis X is the only one that does both. It will change the way you shoot for the better. It has helped me immensely. So as always, I'm super grateful to Mantis and the Mantis X Firearms Training System for sponsoring our Dry Fire Mondays. This is a useful tool, and I'm gonna show you how we use it right now to um, really give an objective standard of gauging what our dry fire's doing and what our muzzle's doing, and if our grip is being effective. This is an effective way to do that. Now, if you don't have a Mantis unit, that doesn't mean that you're out of luck. You can still focus on your front side, or if you're a dot shooter, just focus on the stability of your dot and see what what it does but you have to be much more honest with yourself and you may not be able to see those small differences whereas if I have an objective standard like this whether I'm on the range or I am at home dry firing I have something else measuring that and it gives me an objective measure which is a helpful tool and I know everybody's gonna ask so I'll say something about it this was a temporary tattoo that I got on on my vacation in Panama with the Embora Indians that was a really cool time this one is some real ink that I just got it says Matthew 10 16 on it uh, be wise as serpent and innocent as doves and my wife and and I got some matching tattoos when we got home. That's what that is. So does that answer your question? So dry fire, let's talk about it. What I see all the time is I see people here that they, they in dry fire especially, they get the gun out there, but they get very soft hands. And you don't want to do that. You want to actually grip the pistol like you're going to grip it if you have to shoot it, which means hard. Now, sometimes you'll hear people talk about how hard is hard. John, should I grip 60-40 or 70-30? I don't know anybody that's in the modern teaching of, of handguns that talks about percentages. The answer is hard, but we can maybe get a view of what that might look like by seeing what is best for us and getting an objective measure. So I'm gonna set up my Mantis here to record. I'm just gonna tell it to get after its thing. And now, okay, it's recording, so let's start. I'm gonna do a couple shots on this guy and we're just gonna change our grip up a little bit, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do first. I'm gonna get a very soft grip. I'm just gonna, to get a grip on the gun that's just barely hard enough to kind of keep it in place, and then let it go. Now that was a great shot because I know how to kind of do that stuff in 96.7. But the reality is what we start seeing is the muzzle start moving, if we're paying attention here, is that if I do this and I grip my whole hand at once, you see that score go down, 91.6 there. Now, I'm gonna grip it really hard with my dominant hand, with my gun hand, and then not so hard and pretty soft with my support hand. Now, of course, we know if I'm doing that, this gun's gonna come out of my support hand in live fire. But let's see what it does for just pure marksmanship. If I grip the tar out of it with that hand, then what I get is I still get a shot that's not particularly good. Now let's do the opposite way. I'm gonna do fairly soft with my gun hand and I'm gonna grip the tar out of it with my support hand here. So pretty soft and really, really tight on this hand. Okay, now what you're gonna notice there is that made me really heal and I got the worst shot right there. Now let's grip the heck out of the gun with both hands and just see what that does as I press the trigger straight to the rear and I get a pretty darn good shot. Now. Let's reset here and start thinking about where we're going to focus our pressure. I'm going to focus on my pinkies on this shot. I'm going to get both pinkies for my support hand and for my gun hand, drive that gun out, really think about gripping with my pinky, dropping the shot, and that one there I did a terrible job. Well, why is that? Well, I just healed it. That's what the bottom line is. Let's see if I can do that again without the terrible drive at the end. It was a better shot. Now. So what is this telling us? Well, maybe I start thinking about, okay, I want to grip this pistol hard and see the dot and let it do its thing. And my goal is, is to get it fast enough that when I'm driving the gun out there and seeing it, that I keep my score up high and drive and really get a good grip on the pistol. That was a particularly good shot. Now, if I get too much to one side or the other, in other words, I'm not getting enough support hand grip on the gun, I'll start seeing that, that muzzle press when I'm going. So if I get after it here and I really get on both of them, that was a fantastic shot because I took my time and I saw my, my grip and I really felt it. Let's drive that out again, see what's going on. 
that was a pretty good shot as well. So this is what we want to do as we are dry firing. What I'm focusing on here, whether or not I'm kind of monkeying around with my grip or more than that, I just kind of, you know, I'm starting here, not getting a full draw in, but starting with gun in hand, getting two hands on the gun, gripping the gun like I mean it, like I'm going to shoot and then letting a shot go, keeping above 90. Then the next goal from there is to do that with a little bit of speed. So now I'm gonna drive it, see it, drop that. Now that dropped my score way down. You saw that down to 60, but I'm going fast, seeing it, getting enough of a sight picture and going from there. So what does this teach us? Well, this teaches us if I'm not gripping the pistol tight enough and I start kind of kind of really, uh, and I can see it move when the, the shot goes off, well then that way that'll teach me that I'm doing that. And it also will let me recognize that when I really grip the pistol, drive it out, see my sights and go from there, then that is what gives my muzzle the best stillness to give me the shot that I want, to give me the recoil control that I want, and then to keep driving. So this week, I want you to really think about gripping your pistol like you mean it. Not, not you know, soft because it's dry fire, not easy, but like you mean it, like you're gonna shoot the gun in real life, drive it out there again, get another shot, do a bunch. Man, I, I'm just, you know, here, I've just done 20 shots on camera for you. And, and keep after that. And as you drive that out, get that first shot with an acceptable sight picture, see enough of your sights to really get after it, then what'll happen is, is you'll get more and more refined, you'll get faster at what you do, and you'll be able to be a better defensive shooter. That one wasn't a great shot because I had to adjust my dot a little bit to get the sight that I wanted. Okay, keep after that guys. Hope it helps you this week. Get some grip on your gun and grip it like you mean it.